Hello everyone. I have a journal today that's similar to the Traveler's Notebook style journals that a lot of people have been making. I don't have a Traveler's Notebook, but I do have this, I think it's called the Butterfly Effect book by Jane Davenport. So I made this insert to go to fit in here. And this is kind of like an art journal slash, but it has, you know, whatever you want it to be. It has these elastics and this one's canvas and it's a paintable where it's got this cover also. I haven't painted it yet to personalize it. I've used a lot of papers in this little insert from this stack, DCWV, the Primrose stack. And this piece here, this the closure for when it's not inside of the book, is a piece of elastic that I got, I believe, at Hobby Lobby. I just love the roses on that one. So I'm gonna try to keep in frame, and I'm sorry about there's a little bit of shadowing. Wait, let me see if I turn this other, can I reach this other light? Excuse my reach here. It's a wobble camera a bit. We'll see if that helps some. I don't know, I really can't tell. Okay, well, anyway, on the cover I have some lace and a doily. I stitched on I stitched on the outside of this uh, circle that I cut out of a primrose paper and I've also stitched on the outside of this edge as well and then there's the back. I believe I used some distress vintage photo ink to kind of distress the edges on this. Going inside here let me see. Well, that's too far. This is going to be interesting. I have one of these uh, testing papers that I coffee dyed, looks like, and just fold it up to go in there. I'm going to set that aside for right now. Here's a doily. Some music paper. Now, I used uh, the Ranger Archival inks on my stamping in here. And as you can see here, it it didn't show up right away, but as the ink uh, soaked in, I guess, it shows through. It doesn't bother me, and this is for me, so that's okay, but that's good to know that that happens. And I've stitched on the edge here some ribbon, lacy ribbon. This is coffee dyed paper here. Here's a little banner that I glued on, but before I glued it on, I stitched on this ribbon. and. This was a business envelope. I got a huge box of them at the thrift store. And the very, the ones in the front were all blank. You know, probably 20 or so. And there's probably more than a thousand of them. But then inside there were many of them that had a pre-embossed business label. I was kind of bummed when I saw that. This is a little tag that I, oops, made myself with a little tuck spot there. But anyway, um, coffee dye, they talk coffee dye great, these business envelopes. And inside I have that. And I just have to cover up that other part. And I was inspired by Liz, the paper project um, on YouTube, and how she uses fabric, and also Amity Bloom, um, how she uses her fabric in there. And so I've stitched this fabric on here and left the edges rough. This page here is from a book, and it's got a poem on it, and I liked that. I wanted to keep that. On this side, I have stitched this lacy ribbon down below and this little ribbon here. And I was playing with my daughter's sewing machine that she got for Christmas because it is smaller and lighter. And so I brought it to my desk and I was trying out all the different decorative stitches on it. And it's pretty fun to use. Here's some vintage uh, lined notebook paper that I found in a book that I picked up a long time ago. And it's got that nice aged color, all natural. Some doily here on a book page. This book page, I believe it's in Spanish. I got this from Liz, the paper project. Thank you, Liz. Here is a page from a very old, I think it's the in the 20s, uh, book, a University of Washington song book. And so I reinforced the fold there just so it doesn't tear out because it's very old paper. paper. This tag here I have sewn on for a little pocket. And these die cut type elements are also from the Primrose paper stack. There is 
couple pages in that stack that have these different things that you can fussy cut out. I, I cut them out and this is uh, vellum paper that's copy dyed. Some ledger paper with some fabric washi on below. This was from a Precious Moments book, Little Bits of Wisdom I believe it was called. I love the little images. And these are peg stamps and I love this set. It, I think it's called Brambly Rose. But again, it shows through a little bit. This was from an old planner, and it's got some adhesive lace on one side, some washi in the center because I was afraid it was going to tear, so I did reinforce that also. I have this fabric I'm still using. I got that on when a fabric store was closing, and it's really beautiful fabric, and I just like how it went with the lady here in this little poem. I've stitched on some fabric scraps on the side as a, a pole. Here's another piece of book page from a French book. And there's that there. This is grid paper. I liked how it looked without coffee dyeing because the grids will fade when you coffee dye usually or bleed. I liked it like that so I left it like that. Here's some vintage uh, what is this? velvet trim. I love how the stitching showed up on there. And I love calla lilies, so that's great. I glued this piece from some vintage lace trim on here and left a little bit of it open so this little guy can tuck in. This is the center and there are, it's crochet cotton. And I tied these little butterflies on to the bottom. I wish I made this one just slightly longer so that it could hang really below the book, but I didn't, so it is as it is. Here is a tag. This came from the Primrose paper pack. Let's see if you can get it back in there. And this is a glassine bag. There is space behind it to tuck, but my book was getting really fat, so I stopped tucking things in. Another piece from the Primrose pack. And this page here was from a gardening book. Some more stamping. I, that one went a little crazy there, but another piece of the book and then I've put these tickets on and the butterflies with some cheesecloth behind. Oh and I guess I put some fabric behind that one. This is a library pocket. I think I got that originally from A Tattered Dream on Etsy. It's Denise's store. I think she is Practice Makes Pretty on YouTube and they coffee dye really well so I love that. This I coffee dyed and I also inked up the edges with vintage photo a little bit. This is from the Primrose stack and then I stamped on there with those Brambly Rose pig stamps. Love the butterflies on here and I wanted to keep that poem so left that blank. Some more fabric washi there. This again is from that Precious Moments book. I love the kitty cat in this picture. Some more fabric washi. On here. This is the other piece of vellum and the other side of that tag with another piece of fabric tied on. This beautiful lace came from Liz, the paper project, and I have been hanging on to it because I just love it. It's so beautiful and delicate and the color, I love the color. I don't even like pinks all that much, but this is just the kind of pink that I do love. So, and this pretty little card probably came from the Primrose stack also. Another stamp there. This is the other piece of that vintage music book paper. Another piece of that Spanish book. This was just an off cut that I had, a, a die cut I had die cut a long time ago. I put the corrugated cardboard lines on the back of it. And I had coffee dyed it and just put it in a pile of scraps. Whoa, I went really crazy on the roses on that side, but I <laughs> can't say I love that, but it's okay. Here's some more lace and stitching. These are actually, if you can see, they're like little bows. Kind of looks like the tail of a kite. Some of them seem to skip a little on the sewing machine. But I was also having some tension problems, so I had to solve that. Here's a scrap of lace trim, not lace trim, like some kind of trim. Some more ribbon on there, and again I love this leafy stitch, that how it shows up when you do it over some ribbon. 
another poem from the book page and it looks cute on just paper too this love that little cat here I've taken this little cutout from the primrose that's where it's hiding the embossed business label that's right there and I've just made it a little tuck spot I used that rose stamp again and a few others on this tag and then in here I have a time card with a piece of vintage lace and oh this was from a friend of mine has has a floral business and this was ribbon she had tying something that i bought at a craft fair that ribbon i just love it so i only had a tiny bit of it but i kept it and the time card is also from denise's store a tattered dream on etsy another piece of the primrose paper tiny little stamps there that i did Here's an envelope that I used as a tuck spot. This music card was also from Denise's store that I bought a long time ago. This is from the paper pack. It's white on the back. I didn't copy dye those. Sometimes I do, but I guess I didn't think about it. And this, I found it Tuesday morning, these little epoxy stickers. And I did add some, what's it called, tacky glue on the back to just give it a better adhesive and I'd put some baby powder on the top half to take the stick off so that I can use it as a you know to hold the envelope closed as a closure there. Love that bicycle stamp it's so cute. There's the other half of that original mu music paper there. I think I copied it, this because it was probably printed out on the computer or something or I think it was my husband's and, uh, and he's a singer so I said, are you using this? And he's like, no. And instead of recycling, well, I mean, I'm reusing it. And then some vintage lace trim on there. The other doily. Here's a pocket I put on the back. This is from the paper pack, and it was just large strips on a paper. And then I used some extra paper to stitch these coffee dyed uh, to-do list papers on. There's many of them. And they just tuck right back in there. And the back, as you saw. So this fits just barely inside of here. And the measurements, I have the ruler here, so I can tell you. I should have done that at the beginning. It is just shy of eight inches, about an eighth of an inch shy of eight inches. And just at about four and a half, maybe just shy of, oh no, that's four and three quarters. Just shy of four and three quarters on the width there. So that was my version of the Traveler's Notebook insert, although I don't think it's the exact dimensions of a Traveler's Notebook because I made it for this. And I hope you like seeing what I did with it. I kind of was trying to do simple, and that didn't happen. I keep trying to do simple, but it's not really my style, I guess. I like to embellish, but I am going to keep at it because I do like the simple stuff. But I just have a hard time stopping, I guess. I hope you all have a wonderful and a creative day today. Thanks for letting me share. Bye.